As World War II was raging on, a group of men held the highest military rank in the German army, the Field Marshals. Some of them, amidst the chaos and the tumult, met an untimely demise before they could see the end of the war. Who were these men? What were their stories? In this video, we dive into the lives, the victories, and the defeats of the German Field Marshals who didn't live to see the final curtain call of the Second World War. Fedor von Bock in 1935, Adolf Hitler appointed Bock as the leader of the Third Army Group. It is said that Hitler once commented, only Bock knows how to teach soldiers to die. As a leader who lectured his soldiers about the honor of dying for the German fatherland, he was nicknamed Der Sterber. On 18th of July 1940, Bock was promoted to the rank of Field Marshal during a reception held by Adolf Hitler. In a meeting with Hitler in February of 1942, Bock expressed his doubts about the feasibility of forcing Russia into submission, even if the Red Army was engaged and defeated in battle. Hitler, full of confidence, assured Bock of Germany's superior resources and his determination to keep fighting. There were constant disagreements between Bock's strategic vision and that of the High Command throughout the invasion of the Soviet Union. Bock believed in a direct assault towards Moscow, leaving the encircled Soviet troops to be wiped out by the infantry. However, Hitler disagreed insisting that the pockets of Soviet troops must be eliminated first before advancing into Russian territories. This decision made Bock furious and he reportedly exclaimed, We're letting our best chance of victory slip through our fingers because of this limitation on our armor. By the 13th of December, the German forces had retreated more than 50 miles 80 kilometers, away from Moscow, and on the 18th of December, Bock was removed from his position as the commander of Army Group Center and was reassigned to lead Army Group South in January 1942. The official reason given for this decision was health concerns. Even though Bock privately disapproved of the acts committed against Soviet civilians, he never directly disputed Hitler's orders. Attempts by his nephew, Henning von Treskow, to involve him in the military resistance against Hitler proved fruitless. When his staff officers orchestrated an assassination plot against Hitler during a visit to his army group, Bock stepped in to prevent it. Nonetheless, he chose not to reveal the identity of the plotters. Bock, now a field marshal who had been forced into retirement, felt that he was being unfairly blamed for the Stalingrad debacle. He was presented with an opportunity to participate in a coup against Hitler. However, he was convinced that without the backing of Heinrich Himmler, who was in control of the Waffen-SS, any such endeavor was doomed to fail. As a result, he declined to act against the Führer. As the Russian forces advanced towards Berlin in 1945, Bock received word from Erich von Manstein about the formation of a new government by Grand Admiral Karl Dönitz in Hamburg. Seemingly in search of a new command, Bock immediately set off for Hamburg. Tragically, on May 4, 1945, just a week before the end of the hostilities in Europe, Bock's car was targeted in an airstrike by a British fighter plane while en route to Kiel. The attack resulted in the deaths of Bock, his wife, and his daughter. At 64 years old, Fedor von Bock had the unfortunate honor of being the only field marshal to be killed by enemy action. Walter Model Walter Model was a key supporter of Nazi ideology, joining the party as early as 1925. In 1938, he was promoted to the rank of Major General and was given command of the Four Army Corps, which took part in the 1939 invasion of Poland. He was appointed as the General of the Ninth Army, which operated on the Eastern Front. His tactical expertise proved invaluable during the planning stages of the Battle of Kursk, a major German counteroffensive against the Soviet forces. Adolf Hitler had begun to lose faith in the older German generals of the aristocratic backgrounds, turning instead to his trusted troubleshooter, Walter Model. With his middle-class origins and unwavering loyalty to the Nazi cause, Model found himself increasingly favored by Hitler. He became known as Hitler's fireman. In March 1944, Model was promoted to the rank of Field Marshal in recognition of his exemplary service and dedication. In September of 1944, Army Group B, located in the Netherlands, was placed under the command of Model. In this position, he defended Arnhem against a British airborne attack, also known as Operation Market Garden, stopping the Allies from gaining an early route to Germany. The Battle of the Bulge at the end of 1944 was the last major battle for Model. After finding themselves surrounded in the Ruhr region of Germany, Model, commander of the retreating Army Group B, had no other option than to order his 300,000-strong army to lay down arms and surrender. In a desperate attempt to avoid capture, he committed suicide. Walter von Reichenau Von Reichenau's uncle introduced him to Hitler in April of 1932. Driven by great ambition, he viewed the Nazi party as a platform that could accelerate his career. 
This led von Reichenau to abandon the pro-monarchist stance typical of the Prussian military elite and become an ardent Nazi. He was instrumental in convincing Nazi figureheads like Goering and Himmler that Ernst Röhm and the SA's dominance must be contained for the army to back the Nazi government. This directly precipitated the Night of the Long Knives on 30th June 1934. Reichenau was the commander of the 10th Army during Germany's incursion into Poland in September of 1939. He was the first German to cross the Vistula River, which he accomplished by swimming across. Hitler promoted von Reichenau to the rank of Field Marshal in 1940 during the famous Field Marshal Ceremony. Known for his habit of cross-country running, Reichenau suffered a stroke on January 14, 1942, following a routine run in very cold weather. He also sustained severe head injuries when his flight, which was en route to Leipzig for medical treatment, crashed upon landing in Lemberg. It remains uncertain whether his death resulted from the stroke or from his injuries sustained in the crash. His role at Army Group South was taken over by Fedor von Bock, and Reichenau was given a state funeral. Gunther von Kluge Field Marshal Gunther von Kluge was appointed the commander of the 4th Army of the Wehrmacht in 1939 and led it during the invasion of Poland, achieving great success, earning himself a promotion to the rank of Field Marshal. During the Soviet Union's devastating December 1941 counter-offensive, Field Marshal Fedor von Bock was replaced as commander of Army Group Center by von Kluge. However, his command ended abruptly in October 1943 when he was involved in a serious car accident. After a lengthy recovery, von Kluge was appointed to lead the German forces in the western occupied territories of France in July 1944, after taking over from his predecessor, Field Marshal Gert von Rundstedt, who had been removed from his post due to displaying a defeatist attitude. Kluge was not directly involved in the 20 July plot to assassinate Hitler, but was still heavily affected by its failure. On the 15th of August 1944, von Kluge's vehicle was damaged in an Allied bombing, and he lost all communication with his troops for several hours. Hitler started getting suspicious that Kluger was negotiating with the Allies, so just two days later, Kluger was fired from his position and Model took over. Subsequently, Kluger was recalled back to Berlin to meet with Hitler. He was afraid that he would be implicated in the July 20th plot. Sadly, on August 19th, he chose to end his own life. Erwin von Witzleben Erwin von Witzleben was a field marshal and a leading conspirator in the 20 July plot to assassinate Hitler. Von Witzleben's opposition to the Nazi regime became evident as early as 1934, which led to his temporary retirement due to his outspoken criticism. However, with the looming Second World War, Hitler had to call him back from retirement. By 1938, he was part of the Oster Conspiracy, a group determined to topple Hitler through a military coup and prevent another large-scale war in Europe. But their motivation was severely undermined by the Munich Agreement, which left the group both surprised and disappointed. In 1939, von Witzleben took over the First Army, stationed on the Western Front. When Germany initiated its attack on France on May 10, 1940, the First Army, part of Army Group C, played a pivotal role. On June 14, they successfully breached the Maginot Line and within a span of three days, compelled several French divisions into surrender. This notable achievement earned Witzleben the Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross. Subsequently, on July 19, he was elevated to the rank of Field Marshal. In 1941, he was advanced to the position of Commander-in-Chief OB West, succeeding Field Marshal Gert von Rundstedt. However, a year later he had to step down from his role due to health complications. There are, however, alternative sources which suggest that he was once again forced into retirement after voicing opposition to the invasion of the Soviet Union on June 22, 1941. By 1944, the group of conspirators led by Klaus Schenk Graf von Stauffenberg viewed Erwin von Witzleben as a key figure in their plot. Von Witzleben, being the highest-ranking German officer, was designated to assume the command of the entire Wehrmacht. However, the situation unfolded differently. On July 20, 1944, the day of Stauffenberg's assassination attempt on Hitler at the Wolf's Lair in East Prussia, Witzleben did not show up at the Benderblock in Berlin to lead the coup forces until 8 p.m. By then, it was evident that the coup had failed. Disgruntled with the poorly executed coup, he left after spending just 45 minutes there and headed back to Zossen. Here, he filled in conspirator General Eduard Wagner on the latest turn of events, before making his way back to his country estate situated 30 miles away. The very next day, he was taken into custody by General Linnitz. On August 7, 1944, Witzleben was among the first group of alleged co-conspirators to be presented before the Volksgerichtshof. The same day, Erwin von Witzleben was executed at the Plotzensee prison in Berlin. Well, that was it for today. We hope you enjoyed our video. 
please leave a comment down below with your thoughts and don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell to stay updated with our latest videos. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.